Okay, welcome back to Strength Coach Tutorials, and in today's tutorial, we're going to continue building on this athlete table and chart that we were creating in the last video. Um, this is an example of a monitoring chart, and we've just got a daily wellness questionnaire up there, and we have a chart up at the top that will change based on some values we select from a slicer. For today's video, what I'm going to show you how to do is add a rolling average column where I can select the number of days that I want the rolling average to take place on and the chart is going to automatically update to reflect those values. Why this is important is because often when we're doing athlete load monitoring or athlete wellness monitoring we want sort of a, a one week or a four week rolling average so that we can start to calculate some acute chronic responses to some of these values that we're collecting. So let's get into it. Okay, now as you can see, we're starting off with the sheet that we ended off with in the last Ring Coach Tutorials, episode 44. And what we've done here, just to remind you, in the last one, we created this athlete wellness um, table where we're collecting data based on stress, sleep, mood, and willingness to train. We have a column that's totaling that data to give us a total score, a running average of that data, and then a running max of that data and a running minimum of that data. And then we have a graph up here at the top, and we've used a slicer that allows me to select either athlete's name, and it's gonna show me what their graph looks like. Now, often when we're going to um, calculate out well uh, readiness to train data or athlete load data, we wanna use like a rolling average so that we can um, have a four-day rolling average or a seven-day rolling average or something like that. And one other problem that we might run into is if we're not collecting this data um, very regularly, we may not have a lot of data points in, say, a seven-day period or a 14-day period um, that are, are common sort of um, time frames that we might be looking at. So what I'm going to show you how to do is instead of calculating it off dates, we're going to calculate it off every time this athlete has actually entered um, their training data. So what that's going to allow us to do is just take a rolling average over the last seven times that they've entered their training data or the last 14 times they've entered their training data instead of taking it over the last seven days. So we might actually get more data points in there, which might allow us to have a more accurate measurement. But by all means, you can calculate it off the date as well, and it'll be the exact same sort of formula. You're just going to reference a different column. Um, before we get dug into this here, I have a couple of updates about Strength Coach Tutorials for the month of August. Um, number one, um, new videos are going to be coming out every uh, Monday and Wednesday for the month of August, um, as well as if for whatever reason I get ahead on my videos and I have a few extras created, I'll release one on a Friday as well. And then number two, is uh, this Strength Coach Tutorials idea submission form where you have the opportunity to submit an idea for a future Strength Conditioning Tutorials um, episode. And if and when I use that idea in a future episode, I will send you that sheet for free and you will have access to that sheet. So hopefully submit ideas that I can solve your problem. And if I'm able to do it in Excel, I'll do my best to kind of figure that out and send it over to you so that you have a sheet that works for you. So that form link will be in the description below this video and it's also pinned to my Twitter account. Okay, so um, I've already gone ahead and set up this sheet for the formulas that we're gonna be putting in. Um, like I alluded to, we have the record number and we need to calculate this first. And what I want this to do is actually count every time Dave enters a value or every time Jeff enters a value. Okay, so there's a good function for this. It's called count ifs. So I'm going to put equals count ifs. I'm going to open that up. And in the same way that we did this for the um, running, run, running averages, running max and running minimum, we're going to use the same type of cell references for this. So what I'm going to do is it's going to ask me what criteria range I want. And what I want is the athlete name column and then all the way up, so double dots, to the current um, row. So what this looks like is I want athlete name column. So I've selected the, the top athlete name and brackets, athlete name all the way up to the current row. The at symbol signifies current row. 
And then what do I want to count it? Well, the criteria that I want it to count is if it matches the current athlete name. So I'm going to put that in there. So basically what this is saying is count all the way up to the current athlete row if the um, value matches the athlete name. And then when I close those brackets, what you're going to notice is it's going to count all the records for me. So Dave number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to 15. And then we have Jeff one through 15. Okay, so that's an easy way to kind of do that. And that's going to allow us to actually reference um, the records instead of the um, dates when we go to calculate our next formula. So then the next formula that we need to create is the rolling average formula. So for the rolling average formula, we can use the running average formula as a template because everything's kind of kind of work already. So we're going to copy the running average formula that we calculated in the last video. And just to remind you, it's average ifs, um, table headers all the way up to from total all the way up to the total row and then table headers athlete name all the way up to the athlete name current row if that um, if that athlete name matches okay so we're gonna calculate we're gonna copy this formula and I'm gonna go into the rolling average cell and I'm gonna paste that formula and if I was to hit enter there it's gonna give me the exact same values <clears throat> which is exactly what we would want it to do now um, from there, we need to add a few more kind of conditions um, in order to make it determine um, a, ro a rolling average based on the days selected. So the first condition we're going to add is we actually want it to look at the records. So in the same way that we've done before, it's going to ask me criteria range 2. I'm going to select record and then double dots. I'm going to go up here so I can type double dots all the way up to the current record and from there it's going to ask me what the criteria is that I want okay so I put comma criteria and then now we're going to have to reference um, whether things are greater than or less than the dates that we want so in quotations I'm going to put greater than or equal to so open um, open symbol and then equals to I don't remember what that symbol is called and then uh, when we're referencing um, mathematical equations in these formulas we need to use quotation marks and then to link it to an actual value I'm going to use the and symbol and then I want to link it to um, in brackets the current record minus the day rolling average that we're actually going to use, which is L2. And I'm going to need to lock that in because that value is always going to be the same. So if I select it, hit F4, it's going to lock that in. And then I can close that off. Whoops. And I'll close that bracket off, which it looks like it already is. And then the second part of this is I'm going to need to copy that formula. So I'll just copy this part of it. And I'm going to paste that. I'll make this a little bit bigger so we can see. I'll paste that. And we don't want it to be minus this time. So we want it all the way up to the current record. And then we want it less than or equal to. Okay. So what this is saying is I want you to calculate the average if um, from, sorry, from the total all the way up to the current total. If the athlete name matches the athlete name in the current row. And then if the record matches or if the record is greater than or equal to the current record minus the rolling average that we want and then if it's greater than or equal to the current record or sorry if it's less than or equal to the current record and then I'll close that off and we'll see kind of what happens so what's it gonna give me okay it's gonna give me basically a rolling average formula that's not really calculating anything out it's basically just going to give me the total okay so why that is is because I haven't actually added any days for it to average out so it's just averaging out this day and then it's just averaging out this day so if I start to put in some values here what you're going to notice is that 
it starts to average out these values. And after the, after the day that we've put in there, it's going to start calculating that out. So 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So after the fifth day, it's going to start averaging that out. Okay, so we know that that formula works right now, but I want to add another couple of pieces to it that are going to make it better when we actually graph it. Okay, so the first thing I want it to do is that um, I don't want it to include any values um, where it's sort of negative values in the record number because that's going to skew our results. So I'm going to wrap this whole thing in an if function. So I'm going to put if and then at the beginning, the logical test that I want is the current record cell. If that is, um, where is it? If that minus the value that we're minusing, which is L2, F, and I'm going to put that, put dollar signs around that. If that is less than zero. What I want it to show is double quotations. I want it to be blank. If it's not, then I want it to go through our current calculation. And I just need to add one more bracket at the end. So you'll notice in Excel, the brackets take colors and the colors correspond to the ones that they open and close. So then I'm gonna hit enter. And what we're gonna do is when we add some values, you can see now we're not gonna calculate a value or we're gonna show a blank cell when that actual record is less than zero. So example, if we're taking a five day rolling average, the first four kind of days should be blank and it should only start taking it on the fifths because it should only use records five through one. Okay, we shouldn't be using any values that we don't have. And then the next piece of this is it's just always good kind of formula to wrap this whole thing in an if error. So I'm going to put if error at the front, open that bracket up, and then at the end, or sorry, inside of that, the whole value that I want, then comma, it's going to ask me what value I want to show if there's an actual error. So I actually want to show double quotation marks for blank, and then close that off. And all that's going to do is that if for whatever reason the formula isn't calculating properly, it's just going to show me a blank cell. And then the last piece that we're going to do is we're actually going to graph this now. So an easy way to do this, if I select the chart we've already created, I'm going to right click, put select data, and I'm going to add a data series. I'm going to hit add, and I'm going to select this whole column and hit OK. And because the value is very much, oh, sorry, I put it in the wrong one. So I want it under series values. I'm going to select this whole column and hit OK. Oh gosh, let's do that one more time. I'm going to select this whole series and hit OK. And then I'm going to hit OK. So if you can see, I'm going to make this series, where is it? Right there. I'm going to make it red so that we can see it a little bit easier. Or let, yeah, let's make it red so we can see it a little bit easier. Now you can see that it's, it's working. We have a rolling average. And if I select Dave, you'll be able to see this rolling average kind of take place over the course of the graph. But I'm going to delete this legend that doesn't need to be there. Um, but what you'll notice is, is that the first four days or the first four records, it goes right along the bottom and it looks really ugly. And you'll see like this graph will change now if I change the amount of days that I want the rolling, the rolling average to take place on, right? What I want is a way to remove this part along the bottom where it actually doesn't show a value. So, the way that I figured out to do that is we actually have to make this cell show us an error if the formula can't um, calculate. So the way to do that is inside of here where we put those two quotation marks, I'm actually going to use the formula NA bracket bracket. And then I'll do that at the end in the if error, NA bracket bracket, and then hit OK. And what that's going to do is it's going to put an NA formula in there. So then when I go to my select data, I'll right click on the graph, select data. I can choose what the actual um, data does with hidden and empty cells. I'm going to go hidden and empty cells. And I want to show empty cells as gaps. And I want to show NA cells as an empty cell. So what it's going to do is give me gaps in the graph. 
Now, this is the only way I could figure out to do this because if I were to just leave the cell blank with the double quotations, it doesn't see it as a blank cell because there's still a formula in there. So it doesn't show the gaps. So I'm going to hit OK there. And I'm just going to clean this up quickly because for whatever reason, it is showing this. I want it to actually show that. OK. And what I'll do also is turn off some of the other series so we can see this a little bit easier. And to do that, when you're in a chart, you can just go over to the filter and we can turn off series that we don't want to see. Hit apply. And it's just going to show me the ones that I do want to see. So this is our rolling average. And because we have those NA cells in there, it's not showing the values in that in the chart. And again, like if we change it to seven days, you'll see it's only going to show us a seven day rolling average or a two day or a four day etc. So the chart looks pretty good and then something that I would do is probably just if I double click on sorry this series if I right click on it and hit format data series it'll give me some options I would probably make this line bright red and then just change it to like a dash type line and what you're looking at is is the athlete above their rolling average or are they below it and it's just a really powerful way to kind of start to visualize this monitoring data and we can see it's still going to work for Jeff as well. Okay, so let's close this down and then that's the whole team. So we still have the option to kind of select the different values and oh, it's changed what it looks like. Oh well. For whatever reason, it has changed the colors on me, but it still seems to work. So, anyways. Um, that's today's trick. It's just an easy way to add rolling average to your athlete monitoring or your load monitoring charts. If you like this trick, please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, please share the video. That really helps sort of the channel grow and allows me to get more tricks out to you. And then finally, if you want to follow me on any social medias, you can find me at DSM Strength on Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook, and um, hopefully this helps you out. So. I'll see you in the next episode.